Hi, thanks for joining us today at our YouTube channel. The following video shows the basic surgical steps in a standard bipolar hemiarthroplasty. The objective is an educational video that would help uh, residents and orthopedic surgery fellows uh, to know the, the basic steps and tips and tricks. Um, if you like the video, uh, don't forget to hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please write them below and we would gladly answer back. I hope you like it. The case we're showing you today is a 59 year old male who has been diagnosed recently of a metastatic uh, bladder urothelial cancer. The x-ray reveals a metastatic uh, lesion, lytic lesion at the femoral neck with high risk of pathological fracture with a mural score of 12. So we propose to the patient a bipolar uh, cemented hemiarthroplasty with two objectives. Uh, alleviate the pain and prevent a possible pathological fracture. So the technique you will see in the following uh, video is a standard bipolar cemented hip hemiarthroplasty for a metastatic femoral neck lesion. So the patient is in a lateral decubitus uh, position and we are planning for a posterior lateral hip approach. We identify the previous biopsy site which is in line with our incision. So we go ahead and mark around a 15 to 20 centimeter approach with a soft curve to the posterior aspect of the gluteus maximus. We incise the skin directly with the scalpel and we work through the subcutaneous tissues and up to the fascia with electrocautery. So after incising over um, the um, subcutaneous fat, we arrive to the fascia. I prefer to directly open the fascia with electrocautery. In the proximal third of the incision, you start finding uh, fibers of the gluteus maximus, which I also uh, open up with uh, electrocautery and soft um, uh, opening with, uh, with my own fingers. Um, we then arrive to the bursa of the greater trochanter, which we also um, open up and remove posteriorly with a gauze.
after placing the um, Charnley retractor, we carefully push back the um, remaining trochanteric bursa with a gauze, exposing the external rotators. We elevate forward the gluteus medius with a retractor, exposing the um, piriformis uh, tendon, and then with a electrocautery, we separate it from the gluteus minimus. Then, with a periosteal elevator, we find the plane below the gluteus minimus, inserting a Hohmann retractor and uh, exposing fully the external rotators. We then uh, release the external rotators, uh, staying close to the posterior aspect of the greater trochanter and the femoral neck uh, from proximally to distally, exposing the hip capsule, which is also incised in the same uh, plane or line.
After dislocating the hip posteriorly and placing the hip in internal rotation, we remove the remaining uh, external uh, rotator tissues, exposing the femoral neck completely. Uh, we place a two-pointed Holman retractor in the lesser trochanter. And then, as it is evident, we see the area of the metastasis and how weak and soft the bone is. That it is easily de depressible by just a finger. After clearing the posterior aspect of the femoral neck, we can use one of the brooches uh, to mark the osteotomy line as uh, pre-planned and uh, as intraoperatively we considered uh, correctly. And then with uh, the osteotomy saw, we do first a cut in the femoral neck uh, from the medial aspect to the lateral aspect and then we complete the cut from uh, just proximal to the greater trochanter to the tip of the greater trochanter joining the the first osteotomy the head and the partial neck are then uh, removed exposing the femoral canal uh, we take this moment to clear again some of the remaining external rotators to prepare for uh, femoral canal uh, broaching and reaming. Using the standard instruments uh, of the prosthesis that you're using, we measure the femoral head that um, will be used to uh, select the bipolar component that we're going to implant in the patient. In this case, the femoral head of the patient adjusts uh, perfectly to a 47 millimeter diameter bipolar head. So as you can see, the femoral head uh, in the 48 millimeter diameter was loose. And when we tried to pass it in the 46 millimeter diameter measurement, it didn't go through. At this moment also, we send the head and the um, 
thermal neck osteotomize to to analyze uh, for pathology. We also uh, take some time at this moment to remove uh, any metastatic uh, tissue that we see evident and that could compromise the stability of the hip prosthesis. We also send these uh, fragments which are removed, removed with the wronger for analysis uh, in the pathology lab. Once we have the femoral neck uh, prepared and the metastatic tissue has been removed, we then proceed with the reaming and broaching of the femoral canal according to the specifications of the hip prosthesis that you're using.
So after um, preparing the femoral canal, we are now going to trial the femoral head. So we place a Hohmann retractor in the anterior aspect of the acetabulum, exposing the acetabulum. We then remove the remaining uh, round ligament from the, from the acetabulum. And then with a 47 m millimeter um, trial head, we check for correct fit and stability. We've now placed the hip again in internal ro rotation. We place a two-pointed Holman retractor in the greater trochanter and a Charnley elevator in the um, anterior aspect of the femoral neck, exposing the femoral canal. Then after choosing the correct cement plug and marking the depth uh, that we're going to introduce the plug, uh, we carefully impact it uh, within the femoral canal. After this, we normally use a um, pulse uh, lavage gun and we clean out the femoral canal with, about, with around uh, three liters of uh, um, saline. After we have correctly cleaned out the femoral canal and it is correctly prepared for cementation, we have also prepared the cement w within the cement gun. Um, we follow the instructions according to the cement that we're going to use. We tend to use uh, cement with uh, gentamicin in these types of cases. And when the cement is optimal for implantation, we introduce the, um, 
the cement within the femoral canal. After this, uh, we then proceed to implant the selected prosthesis and uh, wait for the cement to harden. After the cement has hardened, we can check with the scalpel if it's okay. We then take the trial 47 millimeter head and uh, reduce it carefully. With this uh, trial head, we check with for stability in flexion, internal rotation. We also check for uh, tension in extension. And if uh, we're happy with it, we then proceed to implant the definitive 47 millimeter bipolar head. After implanting the definitive uh, bipolar head, we reduce the hip uh, correctly and uh, we check uh, again for stability in internal rotation and flexion and also for tension in extension. Uh, we also repeat a clean out, wash out of the soft tissues before closure and check again for any bleeders that would need to um, coagulate.
After correct hemostasis, we then, we then proceed for um, wound closure. We tend to use a uh, vicral um, for all uh, deep tissues. Um, we try to re-anchor the um, piriformis tendon to the, um, to the greater trochanter or to the gluteus medius tendon. We also try to do a very tight and accurate uh, closure of the hip capsule and the external rotators. Uh, we also close the fascia and then the um, subcutaneous tissue uh, progressively. And then we tend to use uh, stitches for the skin. Three days after surgery, the patient was walking again without pain and with a slight limp.